Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have tropical storm warnings across Nova Scotia, down through portions of the Northeast United States, including Maine, New Hampshire, down through Massachusetts, including the Nantucket area, all the way back to Rhode Island here as of this morning. And that is as Lee begins to move further to the north, and that will be bringing tropical storm impacts to the Northeast coastlines here and into Eastern Canada over the weekend. And you can see here over the northwest atlantic ocean this is the remnants of lee that continues to move further to the north and it will be losing steam as it does so and you can see going through the day today this is the pressure in the surface wind down to a 958 millibar low by this afternoon and you can see a clearly defined tropical storm force wind field around that here as this is just off the coast of the United States to the east there of Massachusetts as we go through this afternoon and tonight. Then as we shift into Saturday, this is going to start to lift further to the north and see it's starting to weaken. The pressures start to come up a little bit to a 961 millibar low, but the tropical storm force winds will still be felt across portions, especially of coastal Maine, getting into Nova Scotia and east Canada as we go through this weekend, especially Saturday into Saturday night. Then as we go into Sunday, it continues to move over land, and as we know, the systems that move over land do start to weaken. This is down to a 984 millibar low as we go into Sunday, and we're likely talking about a post tropical cyclone at this point as we go towards later this weekend. What this could bring to the table for impacts is the storm surge. Now, it's not going to be major storm surge, but if you're near the coastline, we could see up to three foot storm surge here from portions of Long Island up through the Nantucket area, Cape Cod Bay there, the Boston Harbor as well. And then all the way up here through coastal Maine, up through New Hampshire there on the coastline and then up towards the border of U.S. and Canada into Nova Scotia as well with up to three foot storm surge here right near the coastline. So make sure if you live near the coast of any of those areas I mentioned to stay vigilant about some of the waves, the rip currents, and also the storm surge out there. And on top of that, this will still be putting down some rain. So as we know, tropical storms put down some rain. This is total rainfall accumulation over the next 24 to 48 hours here. And you do see in the darker greens, including eastern Maine and much of eastern Canada, including Nova Scotia here and further to the north, we actually see rainfall amounts of two to four inches for many of these areas with locally higher amounts possible than four inches in some of these areas. So that is something to keep an eye on and that will raise up the flooding risk. We have a flash flood probability, especially Saturday into Sunday on the 16th and 17th of September here over those next couple of days. We have that marginal to slight risk for flash flooding. This includes the Portland, Maine area up toward Halton and even the Caribou area there into Maine. And that extends into Nova Scotia and eastern Canada with that flash flooding risk. Even though you don't see the colors on there, the flash flooding risk will be there as well. Well, if you like daily updates and the deep dives on the weather forecast here. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and also the like button to help get this weather information out to as many people as possible. I definitely appreciate it. Going back closer to home here, talking about the weather forecast, we have a severe weather threat across portions of West Texas and Eastern New Mexico today. This is a slight risk of severe weather around the Lubbock region, getting down toward Midland and even San Angelo, Texas, as we go through this afternoon. That marginal risk extends a little bit further off to the south and east, including the San Antonio and Houston metroplexes and just outside of Corpus Christi to the north as we go into this afternoon. We are concerned about a couple isolated tornadoes. Now, it's not going to be a tornado outbreak by any means, but an isolated tornado or two may be possible across eastern New Mexico into West Texas. This does include the Lubbock region, Midland, and San Angelo, Texas, as we go through this afternoon and evening. So timing this out for you, this morning we could have one wave of showers and storms pushing across the southern plains. This will be more for heavy rainfall, maybe some hail mixed in and some gustier winds. I'm not really looking at much of a tornado risk with this morning's activity, but as we go into the afternoon, you see these isolated, more 
discrete cells start to pop up. Those are what we call super cells, and those could start to billow up and produce potentially a couple of tornadoes, some damaging hail, and also some damaging winds along the way this afternoon. And notice, it's very spotty, so not everybody will see a thunderstorm this afternoon, but if you get under one of those stronger cells, they definitely could be producing some severe weather. More, I guess, semi-organized type of activity we could be moving closer to the western side of the Houston Metroplex by mid-afternoon today. And then as we go into the evening hours, we're still hanging on to those isolated to widely scattered thunderstorms here, especially across west central Texas here around the Lubbock region, Amarillo, getting into our Midland, San Angelo, San Antonio. Some of those metroplexes out there by this evening could still be seeing some showers and thunderstorms. But overall, here's your total rainfall accumulation across the Southern Plains now through your Saturday over the next 24 hours. You can see there are areas that see very heavy rain and there's other areas that don't see much rain, if any, across portions of Texas there. So it's just if a matter of if you get under a thunderstorm, yes, you could have some heavy rainfall but if you don't then no you will not have much if any rainfall as we go through today you notice northeast texas doesn't see much much of oklahoma including oklahoma city tulsa down there toward the shawnee oklahoma region we really don't see much of rainfall through that saturday time frame so those are the areas that are likely to miss out and that actually does include the dallas fort worth metroplex through that saturday time frame Going through this weekend, overall, zooming the picture out for you folks to give you an idea of what to expect temperature-wise, it does look rather cool with the northwest flow at times across the Great Lakes into the northeast. We have a little bit more of return flow across the Intermountain West that's going to be bringing up some building heights here across the Rockies. Slightly warmer than average across those regions this weekend. Not hot by any means, but as we go into early next week, say Monday into Tuesday, we're going to flatten out the jet stream a little bit to turn it more semi-zonal across North America here. This brings some beautiful weather in the form of temperatures into early next week. So taking a look at this weekend's temperatures on Saturday, this is tomorrow and high temperatures will be into the 70s much like we've seen over the past few days across the Midwest the Ohio Valley and the Northeast a little bit warmer further to the south as it naturally is we could be seeing highs into the 80s and 90s down here closer to portions of coastal Texas down into Louisiana and Mississippi and some of this heat actually is feedback from the drought. Remember, dry ground heats up faster than wet ground does, so temperatures will be easily achieved into the lower 90s across these regions. Then as we go into Sunday, much of the same areas that are with those significant drought impacts will warm up the most into the low to mid 90s on Sunday, whereas other areas will be seeing some cooler weather, especially near that trough up across the Great Lakes. We're going to be seeing highs in the 60s and 70s there on Sunday. And then extending into the new work week on Monday, is September 18th. We start to see more return flow across the Great Plains. That's going to be leading to more of those 80s and 90s across the board, but not like we saw back into August. That is for sure, so you can forget about that. But still seeing some heat out there. 92 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, 86 in Oklahoma City, 87 in Tulsa, and maybe 90 up there into the Wichita region as we go into the new work week on Monday. And then extending it through much of next week and the following weekend, which would be next weekend we can see that we have above average temperatures that are favored mainly across the upper midwest and the great lakes region that extends up into the northeast but really much of the middle of the country here We'll be seeing above average temperatures through that time frame but where we're going to see more active weather, more troughs coming in. That's where we see more below normal temperatures across the Intermountain West, including California, all the way up there toward Idaho, Montana, and the Pacific Northwest during that time frame. Same thing, looking at precipitation outlook through much of next week into the following weekend, which would be next weekend. Drier than normal across New England and the Northeast and also the Southern Four Corners region, including the Phoenix region over there toward Albuquerque, New Mexico, and near the Rio Grande Valley. We're just not really seeing too much rainfall during that next week's time frame. We do see some active weather across portions of the southeast from the Carolinas down through Georgia and Florida, and then more active weather across the Great Plains, especially centered up here 
into our north central states, including the Dakotas, Minnesota, Nebraska, those areas for some more active weather as we go towards next weekend. And this is some good news because we do have widespread drought and it's getting worse. This is the newly updated drought monitor from Thursday. This was from yesterday and you can see widespread extreme and even exceptional drought really starting to build up across the southern plains through Texas here through Louisiana and Mississippi. And we're starting to see a lot more of the severe and extreme drought here with the oranges and reds starting to build across our northern tier of states as well across the upper Midwest across the mid Missouri Valley and even the Pacific Northwest as well so we need a lot of rainfall to overcome this drought I'm afraid we're not going to see it all to get rid of the drought completely but any rainfall at this point will be some good news so hopefully we can get some of that in towards next week turning back to the tropics we have another system we are keeping an eye on this would be named Nigel as it becomes likely to develop as we get into this weekend. The National Hurricane Center has this at a 90% chance of development there. And same thing we've seen all season long. These water temperatures in the North Atlantic are exceptionally warm for this time of year when you can see well above normal anomalies across portions of the North Central Atlantic where we haven't seen a lot of storms with the upwellings and stuff like that. And those areas are even starting to warm back up again. So look here on Saturday. This is tomorrow. We're lowering the pressures out here. And you notice this is in the main development region well to the east of the Leeward Islands. This is on Saturday, September 16th, down to a 1,007 millibar low. I would not be surprised if we do see a tropical depression form as early as tomorrow or tomorrow night. Then as we move further to the into early next week on Monday, September 18th, this will be pressing more to the north and west, likely a tropical storm, if not a Category 1 hurricane at this point, down to a 997 millibar low. This would be called Nigel. And then as we go in toward the middle of next week, on Wednesday, September 20th, we're going to have to watch our friends up here into Bermuda as this system could make a beeline toward Bermuda or very close to that area as we go in toward the middle and late portion of next week as a formidable hurricane potentially here at a 980 or 970 millibar low, somewhere in that type of vicinity as we go toward the middle of next week. And looking here at the upper level jet stream and the upper level pattern, the steering current, if you will, for the storm. Storm, you can see there's going to likely be a trough moving off of the East Coast. So just like Lee, it's all about the timing of the trough. And as we go into the middle and late portion of next week, it looks like the leading edge of that trough actually comes off of the Carolinas, comes off of the Northeast, and this would actually steer Nigel a little bit further away and still watching up to here toward Nova Scotia and Eastern Canada, but this could curve it away a lot better than Lee actually did further away from the United States. So that would definitely be some good news. So we'll keep an eye on Nigel as it moves further off toward the West, toward Bermuda, and as it gets closer to the United States, States towards next week. And you can see here the experts uh, are thinking the same thing at the Climate Prediction Center as we get in towards late September and even the opening stages of October. Does look rather busy across the western Atlantic here in the main development region, so uh, additional storms and hurricanes will be possible over the next 7 to 10 days and we will keep you updated right here on this channel if anything breaks about any additional storms over that time frame. So make sure to like the uh, video down below if you like today's weather forecast. Subscribe to the channel if you like deep dives on the weather forecast, deep breakdowns on what to expect across your area and across North America. Make sure to share this video on social media whether it's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc. I do appreciate that as well and I hope everybody has a great Rest of their Friday out there.